Chapter 30 Family Companionship Some parents do not understand their children and are not really acquainted with them. There is often a great distance between parents and children. If the parents would enter more fully into the feelings of their children and draw out what is in their hearts, it would have a beneficial influence upon them. The father and the mother should work together in full sympathy with each other. They should make themselves companions to their children. Parents should study the best and most successful manner of winning the love and confidence of their children, that they may lead them in the right path. They should reflect the sunshine of love upon the household. Young children love companionship and can seldom enjoy themselves alone. They yearn for sympathy and tenderness. That which they enjoy, they think will please mother also, and it is natural for them to go to her with their little joys and sorrows. The mother should not wound their sensitive hearts by treating with indifference matters that, though trifling to her, are of great importance to them. Her sympathy and approval are precious. An approving glance, a word of encouragement or commendation, will be like sunshine in their hearts, often making the whole day happy. Parents should encourage their children to confide in them and unburden to them their heart griefs, their little daily annoyances and trials. Kindly instruct them and bind them to your hearts. It is a critical time for children. Influences will be thrown around them to wean them from you, which you must counteract. Teach them to make you their confidant. Let them whisper in your ear their trials and joys. Children would be saved from many evils if they would be more familiar with their parents. Parents should encourage in their children a disposition to be open and frank with them, to come to them with their difficulties, and when they are perplexed as to what course is right, to lay the matter just as they view it before the parents and ask their advice. Who are so well calculated to see and point out their dangers as godly parents? Who can understand the peculiar temperaments of their own children as well as they? The mother who has watched every turn of the mind from infancy and is thus acquainted with a natural disposition is best prepared to counsel her children. Who can tell as well what traits of character to check and restrain as the mother? aided by the father. No time, says the father. I have no time to give to the training of my children, no time for social and domestic enjoyments. Then you should not have taken upon yourself the responsibility of a family. By withholding from them the time which is justly theirs, you rob them of the education which they should have at your hands. If you have children, you have a work to do in union with the mother in the formation of their characters. It is the cry of many mothers, I have no time to be with my children. Then for Christ's sake, spend less time on your dress. Neglect, if you will, to adorn your apparel. Neglect to receive and make calls. Neglect to cook an endless variety of dishes, but never, never neglect your children. What is the chaff to the wheat? Let nothing interpose between you and the best interest of your children. Burdened with many cares, Mothers sometimes feel that they cannot take time patiently to instruct their little ones and give them love 
and sympathy. But they should remember that if the children do not find in their parents and in their home that which will satisfy their desire for sympathy and companionship, they will look to other sources where both mind and character may be endangered. Give some of your leisure hours to your children. Associate with them in their work and in their sports and win their confidence. Cultivate their friendship. Let parents devote the evenings to their families. Lay off care and perplexity with the labors of the day. Counsel to Reserved Dictatorial Parents There is a danger of both parents and teachers commanding and dictating too much. While they fail to come sufficiently into social relation with their children or scholars, they often hold themselves too much reserved and exercise their authority in a cold, unsympathizing manner, which cannot win the hearts of their children and pupils. If they would gather the children close to them and show that they love them, and would manifest an interest in all their efforts and even in their sports, sometimes even being a child among children, they would make the children very happy and would gain their love and win their confidence. And the children would sooner respect and love the authority of their parents and teachers. Satan and his host are making most powerful efforts to sway the minds of the children, and they must be treated with candor, Christian tenderness, and love. This will give you a strong influence among them, and they will feel that they can repose unlimited confidence in you. Throw around your children the charms of home and of your society. If you do this, they will not have so much desire for the society of young associates because of the evils now in the world and the restrictions necessary to be placed upon the children. Parents should have double care to bind them to their hearts and let them see that they wish to make them happy. No barrier of coldness and reserve should be allowed to arise between parents and children. Let parents become acquainted with their children, seeking to understand their tastes and dispositions, entering into their feelings and drawing out what is in their hearts. Parents, let your children see that you love them and will do all in your power to make them happy. If you do so, your necessary restrictions will have far greater weight in their young minds. Rule your children with tenderness and compassion, remembering that their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. If you desire the angels to do for your children the work given them of God, cooperate with them by doing your part. Brought up under the wise and loving counsel of a true home, children will have no desire to wander away in search of pleasure and companionship. Evil will not attract them. The spirit that prevails in the home will mold their characters. They will form habits and principles that will be a strong defense against temptation when they shall leave the home shelter and take their place in the world.